I'm coming for all of you. Right now, there's a 15-year-old sophomore in high school who has no idea they're studying nursing just so they can wipe my ass in 17 years. I'm 50 and single. That's a fantastic combination. I'm going to spend my golden years dating a handful of spit and a jug of Astroglide. Hey, what's happening, Mike Schmidt, 40-year-old boy podcast? I'm loud in my ears because it's a silent house, a silent apartment. I'm in my apartment. I'm alone. I know you're thinking to yourself, well, episode two, year 10 seems like a really early time for you to be alone. And I would agree with you. This wasn't the plan, <laughs> uh, but I'll get to that in a second. Hey, here's something I'm going to share with you guys. I Look, I'm not a Hollywood gossip show. I'm not a guy who goes ahead and exposes the secrets of the well-to-do and the rich and famous. However, I'm going to say this and, uh, and I'll bet I'm not wrong. Well, perhaps I am wrong. I could be, look, I'm jumping to conclusions is the point, but I'm going to tell you this. I think maybe there's a possibility Asia Argento and Anthony Bourdain are, are uh, dating or canoodling, or having an affair of some sort. Because I think he's got like a Frenchy girlfriend or something. Now look, this is a lot of gossip about people you don't know about or care about, quite frankly, but still, I felt the need to bring it to you because uh, social media is the enemy, folks, as we all know. And uh, I follow, for some reason, I follow Asia Argenta, Argento. <clears throat> she is, by the way, the son, uh, the daughter of uh, Damiano Argento, who made Suspiria. And I believe she's a, a director in her own right. And someone who makes uh, films, uh, whatever. The point is her Instagram is very interesting. She'll take a lot of weird photos. Uh, she'll put a lot of interesting music to atmospheric uh, landscapes. And uh, she'll create soundscapes with her, her, her nephews or whoever the fuck is dancing around. Little kids. She films a lot of little kids. You know, now that I think about it, I should probably stop watching it. Because if I'm watching little kids on Instagram, I'm probably headed to a cell somewhere. Probably even a cell even more quiet than the one I'm in right now. Than the one I'm in right now. Then the one I'm in right now. See, this is what happens when I'm alone. I fucking talk too fast. <sighs> Slow it up. So Asia Argento, is a, she's an interesting follow because she'll film stuff in Italy and she'll travel. She'll go to Paris. And I like seeing things from other places because I want to travel, folks. You know me. I, I have the traveling bug. I'm a traveling man. I want to make a lot of stops, but I haven't yet. I've got some coming up that I'll tell you about and some that aren't coming up that I'll tell you about. Look at this. Look what we have on deck. All this information. Stick around, folks. There's stuff coming up that you're going to want to hear and you're not going to want to hear, but I'm going to bring it all to you in a neat package. Um, so Asia Argento is an interesting follow because she films from all over the place. And I don't even know how I fucking stumbled into her thing just for the same reason that I started following Matt Dillon. Remember Matt Dillon? Matt Dillon from Drugstore Cowboy, Matt Dillon from uh, There's Something About Mary, Matt Dillon from fucking Singles, Matt Dillon from Holy Fuck, That's Matt Dillon. Yeah, exactly. Uh, well, he is a guy who is also interesting on Instagram because he, again, you think of Matt Dillon, you just think of like some lunkhead actor. I, and I know that seems ridiculous and mean, and I probably shouldn't paint with a broad brush like that. However, uh, Matt Dillon, in addition to doing it for Johnny, I can tell you this about Matt Dillon. He's doing all sorts of traveling all over the world and he helps out like infants. Like he's got pictures from Somalia where he's giving them water and he's and he's uh, he's donating to these charities and then he's in Rome and and also you know what he likes this is weird Matt Dillon likes to mambo Matt Dillon likes to, and he likes the original mambo because he's got a Victrola and it shows him playing like a seventy eight with the original mambo on it uh, and I know you're thinking to yourself why the fuck do you what uh, do you care because you know why because I don't I can't. I can't watch people showing me uh, their biscuits anymore. And uh, although the bullshit, that's wrong. If I'm on Pornhub, by all means, show me your biscuits. Or if I'm in motherless.com, I want to see your biscuits. But, uh, and I'll tell you what, if, if I'm close enough, I'll just grab you in the biscuits. Because, you know, you know me, I get busy in a Burger King bathroom. Um, but Matt Dillon is a dude who's interesting. Again, like I said, you just think he'd be an actor. And a lot of actors, you think to themselves, oh, they're out at parties or red carpets. Fuck that. He's like, he's on a cliff face in Ecuador. I may have made that up, but he's in, you know, doing something like that. You never know what's going to happen as opposed to other people I follow on Instagram. Uh, look, like I said, Asia Argento, I don't know anything about her. All I know is that she makes interesting things and I like to look at them and she's in another part of the world. And I always, I'm fascinated by other parts of the world. As you know, I went to Kuwait and, uh, I, I said it was the same, but different, but still I have so many videos and stuff of just, uh, rolling landscape or, or, you know, rubble or dirt or desert or buildings. And it just looks different from where I am. I mean, granted, I told you there's an American footprint, but still I want to go to different places. I want to go to Ireland. I want to go, uh, you know, I, I, I had huge plans to go to the Galapagos islands. I want to go to Japan. I mean, all these places I want to go and I'd love to go there and visit and, and then bring you guys with me and show you neat stuff. So I guess what I'm saying is send me money. 
<laughs> so I can get the fuck out of here. Nobody wants me here anymore. America's uh, America's tired of me. They're expelling me into the fucking ether. Like, I, I tell you, I read this thing today on Twitter. You know Rob Delaney? Uh, I look, I don't know Rob Delaney. All I know is he's on Twitter and he's very famous and popular for it. And then I know he bombed massively on Jimmy Kimmel. And now he's got a show on Amazon or Netflix or one other CISO. What the fuck is CISO? It literally sounds like Speed Racer's, Speed Racer's monkey friend. That's what it sounds like. I know that was Chim Chim. I know. But still, CISO sounds like a, somebody's monkey sidekick. And now they're bringing me comedy shows. Like I, 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 And look, I want to have a deal with somebody. I'd love to sign up. And first of all, I need to have some talent before I sign with anybody. I, I get that. Before I get CISO interested or anybody else, I've got to pony up some sort of fucking thing that they'd want to sell and be able to make some money off of it. Because nobody's going to tune in CISO to see a nobody. But why not? I should be the face of that nobody network. I'm a fucking nobody. CISO should have nobodies on their network. So I'm a nobody on a nobody network. There you go. That's And that's the name of the special. A nobody on a nobody network. Mike Schmidt on CISO. Perfect. Although I think CISO is getting shut down. I just saw that too because my comedian friends, some of them are comedians that I know or comedians that I've heard of or comedians I follow on Twitter. Yeah, everybody I follow on Twitter is my friend. I'm good friends with President Trump and John Schindler from the fucking intelligence agency. Um... But so anyway, the, 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 those people on CISO are, are finding out that you can't just give money to nobodies and have it be a success, I guess. So they're shutting down or, or they're transferring into uh, the lucrative business of bringing you Andy Griffith. You know, how, like I said, MeTV, I make jokes about it all the time. But you know what? They're still on and they're profitable because there are old people who are almost dead who want to relive the things that they liked when they were young. There are people out there who are like, oh, my God, you know what? These kids today and their new TV and their newfangled bachelorettes, why, give me Mary Tyler Moore. Ah, no one threw a hat in the air like Mary. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, man. <laughs> Move on with the times. Or don't. Hide in your fucking apartment and watch that shit. I don't care. I, I'm not I'm not a guy judging. You know, I do the same fucking thing. Like I said, I sit and I stare at the bullshit that I got on, on me TV. I watch Kojak. I watch Mannix. Uh... This didn't, I, like I said, it's, it's different case. This generation has the Kardashians. I have Kojak. I would rather hide in my house and watch Kojak. Because I'll tell you what, I get people in the fucking Uber all the time. And they're talking about shit. And it's all, like I said, I saw a poster for that movie Valerian. I saw people in my, the people in my car were talking about seeing Valerian. And the people that are, I don't know. Dude, I don't know any of those fucking people. It's, it's just a grouping of hyphens as far as I'm concerned. That's who's in that movie. You know, like Mark William Badadaba and fucking Stephanie Wilson Galolabar. And I, oh, who the fuck care? And Rihanna. And that's the other one. That's the only one I know. She's the only anti-hyphen in the fucking movie. Uh, but that's because I'm old. I'm an old man, folks. This is year fucking 10. I'm almost 50. I get that. I am out of touch. As much as I try to be in touch, everything is moving too fast. And so I get the instinct that fucking old people have to hide in their house and watch Mary Tyler Moore. They want to see Lou Grant. They want to see Ted Knight. They want to see fucking uh, Gavin McLeod. They want to see Betty White. They want to see Chuckles the Clown. What if I just ran down the entire... I think I did. That is the whole cast, right? Wasn't John Amos on there too? I think it was a weatherman. I don't, I don't fucking know. That was not a show I ever got into. Karen dug that show. That was her deal. Like, And Karen saw it in some kind of funky, feminist, like empowering type of way. She dug Mary Tyler Moore. I think as a little kid, she wanted to be Mary Tyler Moore. Because then we got older, she loved the song. She loved the show. And, uh, and then I said, well, that's fantastic. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a terrible husband and sap every ounce of hope and life out of you. And then you can move on into your life and go be married to Tyler Moore on your own. You know, she, she did, literally, she spent 20 years throwing a hat at me. She didn't want to throw it into the fucking air because I went and fucking leached onto her and stole every fucking drop of her essence that I possibly could because I was a terrible fucking husband. But then I changed my ways. But then that proved out to not fucking work out. All right. Hi. Um, and, and it really didn't work out because we're here talking alone. And I'll get to that in a second. But on Instagram, like I said, man, Asia Argento is out there and Anthony Bourdain is out there and all these people, I follow these people, right, on Instagram. And then they put out videos. Now, I have not, I don't think I've put out any videos on Instagram, but uh, but I've put out just, you know, just shots, like pictures. I, I threw out a couple of, like two Snapchats. I did one during the interlude and then I did another one. Just, I was, where was I, 2020, 20, 20? I don't fucking know. Um, because I'm still having a hard time dealing with the fact that anybody would find those things interesting. Even though then I watch things that are completely uninteresting. Like I said, I watch, I watch David Chang cooking uh, like kimchi, like chopping up the fucking, you know, the cabbage and fermenting it and all that stuff. And it's put up in 10 to 15 second sound bites and I watch it. I love it. I could watch Alton Brown's kittens all day fucking long. Because Alton Brown is, a, I don't know if you know him, he's a scientist slash entertainer. He's another guy who just recently inspired me to where I went, the fuck are you doing with your life? You're driving Uber and just fucking collecting money and trying to stay afloat. Meanwhile, Alton Brown was a guy who was like a cook and then he became a TV guy and he's also a comedy guy. And now he's got a fucking multimedia show where like, he, I think he plays guitar and he and he cooks. And that's the kind, you know what, you know what was the precursor of all that shit? Dice Clay. Like when we were kids, Dice Clay was gigantic when he was selling out Madison Square Garden and stuff like that. But then at the end of the show, he sang. Like he sang Grease Lightning and he played drums and he, I think he had his kid come out, whatever the fuck. Well, 
everybody made fun of him. They're like, dude, well, you're, you're a comedian. Stay in your lane. But now you got Elton Brown out there. He's fucking doing jokes. He's making a salad. He's throwing it at people. He's playing guitar. He's doing all that kind of shit. He's a renaissance man. And, uh, and people want to do it. I follow him on Instagram because I find him infinitely interesting. I like the cool things that he does and I like to see him cooking. Last week he made chicken parmesan meatballs. Did I watch the whole thing? Fuck no. But I, I took a screenshot of it so I could remember later if I wanted to make chicken parm meatballs for anybody in my life I cared about, I would know where to go and find the recipe. Absolutely. Uh, so there are, there are some benefits to watching an Instagram. Like I said, Elton Brown puts up his fucking kittens. Dude, he has, he has two kittens. The best names ever for kittens. I don't get, look, if you have cats right now, stare at them sideways and go, I'm sorry, because you got to tell them that you didn't name them these names. These are great names for cats. Even better for kittens. When they grow up, maybe they'll grow out of these names. But his two kittens are Stir Fry and Shrimp Toast. Those are great names for cats. Stir Fry and Shrimp Toast? Come on, those are fantastic. I will fight you if you think they are not. Line up outside my door right now. We're at my apartment. Maybe Steven will come by. He can, he'll tag in. I'll tag him in. And he'll, he'll use his fucking uh, crazy old man strength to fucking beat you down. His weird uh, on the spectrum Asperger's, Alzheimer's. He doesn't have Alzheimer's yet. I don't know what the fuck he has. Although he might have Alzheimer's because I'll tell you what, since that day I talked to him on the podcast, I've seen him still hasn't said hi to me. Maybe he forgot. So maybe the Alzheimer's has kicked in. Maybe he just, ha he just has selective neighbor Alzheimer's. That's right, SNA. <laughs> Um, so on Instagram, I follow all these people, you know, I, and also th this is a good microphone. Like I, I was trying to tell somebody, somebody was talking about starting a podcast uh, in the Uber again. I have this weird fucking Uber Sherpa where everybody talks to me and I, they find out what I do and then they want to bleed me with questions. Uh, podcasting was just going to, it's going to collapse in more than itself, right? It's just going to be like this weird black hole that fucking destroys itself. It, it already is because anybody can put out a show as we've talked about. But now I met a guy, I drove him the other day. And he was like, hey, I have a YouTube channel. I do comedy sketches on it. And then he asked me about me. And then I told him that I had a YouTube channel and I had a bunch of content. And, and he was talking about monetizing it and things. But then I was asking him, I go, well, do you have a, like a group of people that do your sketch? He goes, no, no, I have a wig, you know, if I have to play the female part. And I know he meant well when he said it. And I understood that. And I'm like, and I genuinely meant, well, cool, man. Good for you. But later in the night, that thought came back to me, and I just started laughing in my car by myself, where I was like, hey, man, do you have like an ensemble cast of people that you go ahead and use in your YouTube clips? No, nah, I got a wig. I, I'm very confident I can pull off the female part. I watched Kids in the Hall twice and Monty Python once, so I don't really need a strong female voice in my sketches. I can go ahead and do that. Yeah, I do have a beard, by the way, but it's even funnier than that, because now I have the wig with the beard, right? It totally kicks in. It's, it's a great idea, right? How do I monetize it? How the fuck do I monetize it? Uh, and that gentleman, by the way, said he was going to listen. And he didn't really go crazy about monetizing. So I, I, I'm, I'm betraying him a little bit here. But he did ask about it. And I'm like, I don't, dude, I have no idea. I mean, I, I, I do this and I do this and I do this. And hopefully it works out. Um, but, you know, young people are learning. They're all getting together and stitching their lives together and learning what to do with their YouTube channels and their CISOs. And, and look, there's so many avenues to bring you themselves. There's so many avenues to make you sit and listen to them and pay attention or... There's so many avenues for them to disappear and never be seen again into a CISO hole that nobody fucking knows about. Because like I said, CISO is seeing it's not so profitable to give nobody's money. So they might fall back on that, uh, hey, let's buy some $6 million man reruns for the same amount and get people to watch for nostalgia reasons. Because nostalgia sells, man. That's not fucking around. I mean, you can try to get somebody to watch a new comedian or you can try to get them to watch 25 episodes of Family with Christy McNichol and everybody's going to go, you know what? I remember that show. That was awesome. And it brings them back to when they were 11 and they sit there and watch it and stare and they think that, you know what? Remember when I wasn't so sad and I thought I had hope? Instead of a new comedian telling them there's no reason to have hope. <laughs> nobody nobody wants to see a comedian out there going, hey, man, this because I mean, I'll tell you what, I and I don't want to get too much into this, but with the state of the world today or the perceived state of the world today, uh, I, I have a lot of comedian friends who have, who have kind of abdicated their responsibilities of being funny. And they decided, you know what? There's not, this isn't funny anymore. And I'm going to go ahead and retweet all of these dudes. And eventually we're going to impeach this guy, right? It's going to be fucking hysterical. It's going to be so great. And that'll be a great day. And, uh, I, I mean, I have, I have comedian friends who are literally just wearing a sailor suit and walking around times square, waiting for a nurse to kiss. That's it. They're all just waiting to see when the fucking shoe drops on, on the president and they can go, yay, celebration. It's VT day. Uh, or yeah, uh, victory Trump day. Yeah. All right. Right. That, that's good. Or D day, which was, I don't fucking know. It's VT day. I'm going to stick with that. I mean, it could be VD day, depending on how you want to look at it. If you kiss that nurse the wrong way or in the wrong place, or if she's been kissing guys before you celebrating a bunch of other T days. Uh, oh my God. What it was, it could be LBGTQ day. Why not? Go ahead and try and smack and kiss every nurse you see and, and call it a lottery. Who knows who you wind up with? You get a mouthful of something. Uh, all right. So I watch on Instagram and I got all these people that I follow and they're interesting and they're fun and I do enjoy them. And I like seeing the things that they bring to the table. But then again, there are some people out there that are just putting up videos and you're going, I don't, 
I don't see any reason why you thought this was a good idea. Now, case in point, there's a guy I follow, and I, sh I don't want to call him out because I'm a huge fan. Uh, but I'm a huge fan of what he does as his job. When I see him not doing the thing that's his job, I kind of realize to myself, well, maybe he's a little different and maybe a kind of guy I probably wouldn't want to have a conversation with. And, well, I, you know, I'd talk to him. I mean, he's, he's totally a shy dude, but I, I don't think he'd want to talk to me. Uh, he'd, he'd probably more be likely slap me, I would imagine. He'd give me the Stockton slap. It's our friend Nick Diaz, who I've referenced on this show before. I've talked about Nick and Nate Diaz, the Diaz brothers. They're MMA fighters. They fight in the UFC. Well, I follow Nick Diaz on Twitter. And, uh, or I'm sorry, not on Twitter, on Instagram. I, I can't imagine following him on something that needed words. But uh, on Instagram, he puts up photos and he puts up videos. But this is the thing. Nick Diaz is a professional fighter, but really not anymore. Because he's holding out for like a fuck ton of money. And I don't blame him. Because you know what? There's this whole thing in MMA. Guys should fight. Guys shouldn't fight. You know what? You should step up. Are you a pussy? If you weren't a pussy, you'd fight this guy. Well, it's called prize fighting, motherfuckers. Pay a guy and he'll fight. I'm so tired of fucking fighters getting shamed by nobodies on social media who are like, ah, oh, you're a pussy, you should fight. I, I, I just want these guys to go to their house. Like, you know what, like, like Uber, I just want to start a service where I take people who've been trolled on the internet to their fucking troll's house so they can fight. I'll be like a, like a troll chauffeur. I, mean, I won't drive the troll. I'll be the trollee chauffeur. And we'll go to the troller's house and just, they can just have a fucking lethal weapon showdown on the fucking lawn. You want a shot at the title? Don't mind if I do. We'll turn on a hose and we'll fucking have Danny Glover tell you to get back and let those two fucking go at it. If someone's tormenting you on the internet, you get the right to punch him in the fucking face. Even today, there's some fucking hidden camera nonsense, I guess, and some guy from CNN got caught saying something, and I'm like, who the fuck cares? Nobody cares. Nobody gives a flying fuck about any of the shit that's going on in the world. I just can't anymore. I'm divorced from it. I'm separated. I, you know, you want me to, like, I'll tell you what, I'm Mr. Pinking the whole thing. I'm Mr. Pinking the whole fucking thing. If you, if you got a piece of paper, I'll sign it. If you want me to commit to something else, I'll do it. But as far as this fucking non-college bullshit you're giving me, that's a non-starter. I'm sorry, I cannot sit here and back you and everybody's going to rallies and they're buying t-shirts and they're making signs. The worst is at those fucking rallies and they get like a four-year-old on the sign. He's not my president. Well, if, then get the fuck out of here, kid. Go to fucking Guam. Go live somewhere else. You're four. You don't know anything. Shame on your parents for making you hold a sign. You, you, you Literally, that sign could say, I love gumball. That kid has no idea. He's four. He can't read yet. You know why? Because he's not me. I read when I was two. I was a fucking man. I was reading fucking newspapers when I was two years old. You know what I'm doing now? Talking to you motherfuckers about nothing. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, so Nick Diaz puts up all these fucking things on Instagram, and it's it's just... He somehow, and look, you'll, this is weird. I have a tenuous personal connection to this, which makes no fucking sense, but it's true. I, uh, I, I, I go on his Instagram and he fucking, all he does is he parties because that's the whole thing is Nick and Nate, they get high and, and that's, a, and they're fighters who get high. And so they have this weird fucking cult of personality. Everybody's like, yeah, fucking Diaz brothers. And I, I look, I'm in it. I love their fighting skills. I don't care that they get high. I'm not like a champion of it, but I mean, I don't give a fuck if they get high. It doesn't mean anything to me. I don't care if you get high. I, you could be getting high right now. Who, who among you right now is licking a micro dot or licking a fucking, uh, Mickey Mouse tattoo with LSD. I don't know. Didn't they used to do those? Like, what are those called? Or who, who, who right now is chewing on a sugar cube that has a drop of fucking LSD on it? Anybody? Who drops, who eats mushrooms and listens to this show? You don't drop mushrooms. You drop LSD. You drop acid. And then you eat mushrooms. Uh, and I had to hear a story in the car about some guy this week. And he's like, oh my God, I ate these mushrooms. You know, and it started to kick in. And then I had to drive and I couldn't drive. So I had to call an Uber. And I'm like, oh, thank God that wasn't me picking you up. The last fucking thing I'm going to do is pick up mushroom Mickey and have him in my back of my car tripping his balls off dog and not knowing where he lives i get enough drunks who don't know where the fuck they live uh and then i get enough sober people who they live at like 23 11 and i pull up at 23 13 and they go uh could you back up please oh yeah of course i could do me a favor you know what why don't you just let me drive up your yard and through your fucking front door and put you right in your goddamn bedroom because god knows you wouldn't want to walk six steps you fuck hi uh and not everybody's like that, but I bring up the people that are just so I can tell you that that exists. And you might even be that person. Maybe you think if you're paying for a service, you deserve to be brought exactly to the very spot that you thought of. Like X marks the spot, like you're some kind of fucking treasure hunter. Like maybe you've got a pickaxe and you want to go ahead and dig in the absolute right spot. And I'm supposed to drop you there, but I got news for you. You got feet. You can use them. Walk five steps, get to your fucking house. I overshot it because the GPS said, go over here. And I did. Or maybe it was safer to put you there because there were people behind me. I don't know why I'm talking to you like you're in my fucking car right now. Because I'm not talking to anybody in my car like this because that would be fucking shitty. Uh, instead, I just smile and grit my teeth and go, hey, you have a wig? <laughs> oh, man, I hope that dude doesn't listen. Because I've started now telling people because they'll ask. And I, I used to just be like, well, no, uh, I don't want to go into this. Well, you know, you, I do what everybody else in town does. Don't worry about it. That kind of thing. Um, 
But I, but I think it was those guys when they were like, hey, man, does there, do you make money with that? And I go, well, I am driving you guys around. I mean, you do realize that, correct? I mean, whenever anybody asks me how much money I make or what I do as a comedian, are you, oh, you're a professional comedian. Do you make any money at that? And, I, and I'll, I'll say, well, I make some, but I am driving you around. I mean, I got to make some fucking other cash because, unfortunately, I got health insurance to pay for and a personal trainer and a therapist who I'm not seeing nearly enough, apparently. Um, so... Uh, Nick Diaz puts up all these Instagram videos and uh, they're all him partying like he's in Vegas. He somehow has fallen in with this group of fucking affliction wearing tap out hangers on motherfuckers. It, it looks because, again, all of his shit, he's in the DJ booth because that's the thing. He's become a celebrity. So he's in tight with the guys who run One Oak, which is this club down here in L.A. And also they have a club in, in, uh, in Hyde. One Oak and Hyde are here in L.A., but they're also in Vegas. So he's always in the DJ booth because apparently he's, he's got a bottle service and a comp. But when he films, Nick Diaz does these selfies where he'll be holding the phone and he'll just kind of scan the room. And he'll this is the thing that drives me crazy. And I'm sure this is going to sound fucking terribly misogynist or whatever the fuck. He'll skim right by some girl with big tits in a tiny dress. Like, I mean, some girl with, I mean, just a knockout fucking rack and, uh, and a dress cut to there. You can practically see the gap, if you know what I'm talking about. And uh, he'll, he'll just zoom right by her, and then he'll show three dudes in faux hawks with tattoos, like holding up the, the fucking West Saeed hands and just going, Nick Diaz, motherfucking Nick Diaz, Diaz brothers, and they're, and they're yelling at the camera. And it just, it looks like he's hanging out with LMFAO. You remember that fucking band? Uh, they're sexy and they know it. That's who it looks like. This whole, every video he takes, it's him with these older Randy Gerber looking motherfuckers and LMFAO uh, in a bottle service place. I was like, dude, the whole point of getting bottle service, like I wouldn't, there wouldn't be a dick near me if I was rich enough to get bottle service. I mean, you know, as long as I wasn't, you know, look, and look, if I'm married, it's a different story. And I know Nick's not married or he's not in a relationship, but if you're a single dude, and you've got enough money to be fucking comped into fucking One Oak and Hyde in Vegas, and you get bottle service, you get your own fucking area, and you get to go to the DJ booth, there wouldn't, there wouldn't be balls within fucking 80 feet, 100 feet, a mile. Fuck that. Um, there wouldn't be balls around in the club. Are you fucking kidding me? It would just be a pile of tits. That's all it would be. I would just be there it's surrounded by a, a, a just a, a, a concentric circle and a fucking MC Escher painting of just pussy up and pussy down. That's all I would have around me. How the fuck do you sit here and hang out with these dudes? But everything, he'll be, he'll get into a car at the end with dudes. And then he goes to like, he'll go, uh, after hours to some like candy store in the, in the fucking mall or in the, in the casino or, or a dope store. And he's always with these dudes. And I, I just, I don't. And then even worse is he'll sometimes he'll take their conversations. He'll be in a hotel room. He's just sitting on the bed smoking a gigantic joint. Like literally, you know, he when he exhales, every fucking smoke cloud that comes out forms the face of Bob Marley. That's how fucking powerful and big this fucking joint is. And he he's just sitting there smoking and he's filming these dudes. And they're like, hey, bro, you know, hey, bro, I was doing this, bro. And then, bro, what are you doing, bro? I was over there, bro. And bro, hey, you know, bro, it was the thing, bro. Yeah, I just, no, don't, I'm not trying to get in your head, bro. But I'm just, I'm, I'm just, I, I hear that shit all the fucking time in my car and I, I can't even take it for the fucking nine minute ride. Hey bro, dude, bro, I was smashing this chick, bro. It was fucking amazing. I was just, hey bro, oh dude, you gotta be fucking kidding me. And he chooses to hang out with that guy, those guys. That's who's in his fucking room. That's the people that are in his fucking hotel room. That's the people that are in his bottle service. The fucking bro, bro, bro dudes. God damn it. I would not even, I, I, there wouldn't be a, a fucking, ugh. Anyway, I, I, I just, it's horrifying to me. So, but I go, look, and, and the thing is now I just tap it to get through because I know he's not going to show any chicks. He's not going to show any hot girls. And then when he does, he'll, he almost looks scared of girls. And I know this is fucking weird to say he's a professional fighter or whatever, but a girl will come up and she'll literally like wrap her, her arms around his shoulders or his chest and he'll make this face like, whoa, like that's happening. And I want to go, dude, you're, you're a fucking UFC fighter triathlete who's worth at least, probably at least a million dollars. I mean, I'm sure he's spent a ton of it on fucking weed at this point. But you, of course these girls are going to be climbing all over you. If they can get through the thicket of bros you've surrounded yourself with, he's just, he's just got a fucking phalanx of bros forming a goddamn circle around him. It's like the old, uh, there used to be this old football game that you could play where you rolled a rolly ball and it was just X's versus O's. There were no players, no jerseys. And then you would just fucking, you would try to surround yourself with all of the X's so you could barge into the fucking end zone. That's what he's doing. He's just surrounded by X's. Uh, chromosomes. I, I guess I should go that route. That's what he's surrounded by. Um, 
but goddamn, I like a, a girl can't even get near him. But then when she does, he makes this face almost like, oh my god, why is this girl here? And uh, it's I and look, I understand he's got social misfit disease, and that's why he fucking smokes dope, and he makes a living as a fighter. It's not like he's exactly glib. Um, although, what if he is? What if he's the most glib motherfucker in the world? He just chooses to fucking go, totally keep that under wraps because he never talks to these bros. Oh, I, what, I just tell you this. I said I had a tenuous fucking connection. I was telling the same story to my fucking to the guys in the gym. Now I work out with John, but there's another trainer named Mariano, and uh, he's a huge UFC guy. John knows about it, but but Mariano really watches it. So. We were talking, and I go, dude, I started following Nick Diaz on fucking Instagram, and it's a mess. I go, it's just all of, it's just these bros, and he's partying, and he's just in Vegas all the time. And Mariano goes, that's my fault. <laughs> I'm like, what are you talking about? He goes, dude, I was in Vegas. This is like a year and a half ago, and we're in line to get in a hide. Uh, and, or one, oh, I don't know, one of the clubs. And Nick Diaz walked up, and they wouldn't let him in because he had gym shoes on and a black T-shirt. And... Uh, the, he was trying to talk to the bouncers and all the, you know, his fucking posse he was like, no, man, it's Nick Diaz, bro. Nick Diaz. And the bouncer wasn't listening, but Mariano knew the bouncer. So Mariano went up to him and he goes, hey, that guy's a UFC fighter. He's fought Spider Silva. Like, he's a big deal. And so the guy went, oh, okay, cool. And the guy uh, let Nick Diaz and all of his boys in. And Nick looked at Mariano and was like, all right, hey, man, hi. And he gave him a pound and he said, thanks. And, uh, and Mariano said after that, that's he got in with the fucking owner or the manager of the club. They came over and brought him bottles, and that was it. He became their guy. So now he's like almost this mascot for these fucking Vegas clubs. And uh, and if if that's all you want, you know what I mean. There's nothing wrong with that. Like I said, I I sit in my fucking house and I watch fucking Kojak or Mannix or fucking you know Chopped or, or all that. That's what I choose to do. I hide. I hide from the world. But he hides in plain sight. He goes out to the fucking Vegas nightclubs. He hides behind a fucking cloud of weed smoke. Because he's not fucking fighting anybody these days. Uh, I wish I could say the same thing. <laughs> Let's get to this now. Let's talk about this. Why not? Um, so I'm alone today and, uh, and and talking to you guys by myself. Wasn't the plan. Wasn't what I wanted to do. It's, you know, like I said, episode two, year 10. I'd at least like to get some under our belt before we want to have to split up the format. Because normally it's me and Lily in the room. Uh, and, and then I talk and then she's here and, and everything's fine. Um, well, I can tell you that this week I went over to Lily's house and, uh, was ready to do a show and I got in there and usually when I get to her house, we talk for like an hour or so or hour and a half and I, you know, I talk about my life. She talks about her life and we unpack a bunch of shit and we figure stuff out and, uh, and eventually we get on the air and, um, you know, I'm going into this because I'll tell you what I have, I have, uh, you know, I, I've spent a lot of time not telling you guys things. So I'm just going to fucking tell you. And look, I can't do everything. I can't say everything. Eh, what the fuck? What? Just talk. Uh, Lily threw me out of her house. She fucking kicked me out. Uh, I went to her house to talk uh, and do the fucking podcast. And we were there and I said something she didn't like before we even went on the air. And she kind of looked at me like, uh, uh, you know, why the fuck would you say that? And I, I felt that I wasn't really out of line. I thought it was something. To, and look, by the way, I'm just going to tell you this right now. I'm not going to tell you what it was because I don't want anybody fucking picking sides. OK, uh, it's for a bunch of different reasons. But it, the, the bottom line is, you know, there's there's no winner and no loser here. Well, the loser is fucking uh, you guys because you get, you get me talking alone. Although I don't know if that's a loser. Ah, fuck, shut up. I'm good. Um, but I said something and she didn't like it. And uh, she gave me some shit about it. And then I gave her shit right back. And we actually started fighting about it just before I went on the, on the air, of course. And then uh, I said, I, I went, all right, fine, fuck this. I did the thing that I always do where I went into a cocoon. And I go, you're right, fuck it. I'm stupid. I'm, I'm dumb. I said the wrong fucking thing again. Because I, I, I didn't think I was wrong. But when I tried to explain myself, I, it turned out I guess I was. But I mean, you know, people's feelings. And I can't, look, I can't fucking, I can't. So I threw open the microphone. And I just went, hey, what's happening? And I talked and we, and I just said, look, apparently folks, I fucking hurt people's feelings and I say the wrong fucking thing all the goddamn time. And, uh, and then she jumped in and we wound up going at it. We went at it for like seven minutes and in in, in, I was recording it and I went, there's nothing interesting here. And I fucking took my earbuds out and I stopped it. I go, I'm not putting this shit out. I'm not, it's, I'm just not going to fight with you this fucking early. And, uh, and she's like, well, you know, I'm your friend and I'm going to call you on your bullshit. And I said, yeah, but I, and, and then I said, it's funny, I said another thing that pertained to the thing we were talking about off the air. And she looked at me and she goes, and now you're tripling down on that? Get out of my house. I went and she goes, get out, get, just get, get out of my house. And she started crying. And uh, I went, fine. 
And then I went through that well-rehearsed fucking bullshit that I always have to do when I storm out of someone's house of grabbing all of the stuff that I need, like the jerk. Like Steve fucking Martin has to grab a chair and has to, you know, this chair is mine and then this is mine. I, I literally, because I had, I had gotten lunch at Tamale House. It's in her fridge. So now I got to fucking, because again, I drove to her fucking house. I set up, so now I'm getting thrown out. So now I got to fucking take my microphone. I got to take my earbuds. I got to put my, uh, my, unplug my fucking laptop. I got to put that shit away. You know, you can't just, there's no dramatic storm out when all your shit is laying all over the fucking place. You can't just go, fine, fuck this, man. Yeah, fuck this. And turn around and slam a fucking door. No, instead you got to uh, meticulously eject your uh, external hard drive so you don't lose any material and fucking backups. Yeah, I, so again, she got up and she walked away from me. She went on the other side of the room and I just packed my shit. I fucking, I closed my laptop. I took out, you know, and again, like I said, painfully slowly. So slow motion in my storming out of the fucking house, but it had to be done. I got told to get the fuck out. So I got the fuck out. And then I had to go in the fridge and I had to get three bottles of water and put them into my cooler and then grab my tamales. And then I had to fucking just put the whole thing together. And it was just, it was so fucking stupid. Again, it was so stupid. Every time it happens to me, it's stupid. I have spent countless hours the last two years walking away from the women in my life and I don't know how the fuck to make it any better or smarter or any less stupid every time it fucking happens uh and and I I and look you know normally my instinct my go-to is like I said I've fallen on my sword quite a bit and said well I did this or I did that or I know I did this um I said something she didn't like but I didn't think it was but it wasn't about her it was like about another situation and she made it personal in my opinion uh and she's not here to refute that of course um, and she'll tell you different. She's going to, you know, whatever the fuck, if she, if she wants to, she might not even want to fucking talk about it. She might not even want to deal with it. She might not even want to fucking see me ever again. I don't know. I got no fucking clue. Cause I'll tell you what, once the 18 minutes went past and I packed up all of my shit and got the fuck out of her house. Um, that was it. I haven't talked to her since. I mean, I, I came home. I went, I had to drive because I had to make some fucking money because Ahmad is here today on Wednesday. I gotta go pick him up at the airport. And, um, and that was it. I haven't talked to her. I haven't texted her. I haven't, cause I mean, I, on cause, uh, and look again, what the fuck? Um, she thinks I'm wrong. I don't think I am, uh, this time I know cause normally my instinct is to just go, well, you know, I, I'm stupid and I did this and I'm wrong and da da da. And I, I, uh, I, I don't think I was this time. I just don't think I fucking was. So that happened. So that's why I'm here alone again. Uh, because I fucking, I, I got to walk away from somebody else important in my fucking life. And, and, uh, where I, well, actually this time I didn't walk away. I was told to get the fuck out. Uh, and I've been told to get the fuck out of somebody's house before recently, as a matter of fact. And then I, when I did, I was, then I was an idiot for leaving the house, whatever the fuck doesn't matter. Um, so that's why I'm alone. And, uh, and I'm hoping this isn't an occurrence and I'll tell you what, I don't, I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. Um, I don't know if this is a blow up, a minor fucking blip. I don't know if Lily will be here next week. I don't know if Lily will be here ever. I don't even know if I'm doing 2020. I get no fucking clue. And the funny thing is I do that. All right. I, and then I talk to somebody and they'll just be like, oh, come on, man. You know, this is just a disagreement or you, you always make things to the extreme or you take it. Well, I mean, cause I don't have any fucking other touchstone. I don't know what the fuck to do here. And I, I'm, I'm, I can be a black and white guy a lot of the time. Um, but I, I, and again, if I, if I do something that I think was out of line, I will absolutely own it. I don't think I did this time. I really don't. And again, I know that's very vague and I hate being a vague book dude online. And I don't like telling you guys this or that, but it was a personal fight and it was about a, a bunch of different things. And, uh, and I, I, uh, you know, it, it, it was, <laughs> I was sharing something that I probably shouldn't, that I, what, who, you don't care. Fuck. Nobody cares. Uh, but that, but that's, that's why we're alone, man. And like I said, I don't, I don't want to fight anymore. And that's the vibe. I don't want to fight anymore because I, I get and I get opportunities to fucking fight all the fucking time, man, all the time. And it's seething inside of me. And I because I look when I say I don't want to fight anymore. I mean, that's really not true. I mean, I, I, I there's part of me that wants to absolutely just go fucking propeller fists and run through a crowd of people and just leave people and bodies in my fucking wake. There is that fucking trigger that gets tripped inside me that I just want to fucking try to, hey, you know, I've never thrown a real spin kick, but I bet I could do one right fucking now. I would love to kick you right in the liver right now, motherfucker, with you and your mouthy mouth and your fucking bullshit and you talking a bunch of shit because this just happened in the fucking car. It happened, you know, when I stormed out of her fucking house, I was pissed. I got in the car and I was like, and I, and again, there's this thing where I keep saying, I'll tell people this fucking story. I'm like, well, you know, I was a bouncer for a long time and, uh, and, and I didn't want to go back to bouncing. So I took this gig because that's true. I mean, you guys know that when I was when the shit hit the fan at, uh, when Karen bailed, I was like, well, I need a gig. And I was actually considering going back to bouncing, but I, I don't want to get fucking hit anymore. I just don't. I mean, I do, 
there's part of me that wants to get, keep getting hit and just laughing and going, you don't know where I've been, Lou. You don't know where I've fucking been. Hit me, fucking hit me, keep hitting me because I fucking deserve it or I want it. And, uh, but then it's my turn and it's my turn to fucking hit you. And it's going to be fucking fantastic. Cause I fucking leap upon you and crouch, uh, crouch on your chest like a fucking frog and then bury my fucking fingers in your eyes. Hi. Um, what if I fought like that? What if I was a weird guy who fought like toad from the Marvel universe and I just jumped on your chest and I put thumbs in your eyes. That's terrible. Nobody wants that. I don't want to be that fella. I want to be a guy who goes Marcus of Queensberry. Um, but it was funny when Lily and I were talking because she was giving me, she, uh, she was like, you can't say that or you can't say this. And it's like, I'm, 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 I can't be told anymore what I can and can't say. I mean, this show is, this is, this is where I can say what I want. I thought, and we weren't even broadcasting at the time. I, whatever the fuck. I'm, and that's not her fault, man. It's not her deal. I, she, she, but she was giving me, she was like, you know, you need to understand that people would feel this way about this. Or people would feel that way about this. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, I think people who listen know who I am as a guy. I'm not a bad person. I don't think. Even though I've been told that the more you say you're a, a good person, the less you are. <laughs> that, that's some fucking math for you. That's fucking awful. Because <laughs> I would, that would always be my go-to with Jill. I'd be like, I'm, I'm a good man. I don't know why this is happening with us. And then all of a sudden she's like, you know, the more someone says they're a good man, uh, the less they are. Not even a little bit. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why? God, I, I'm tired of these Jedi mind tricks and spinning the fuck out on me and making me look terrible. I'm not, I'm not terrible. I'm not. Jesus Christ. Uh, but then, you know, I was talking to Lily and she's like, you know, you can't say that about this. And I'm just like, well, I, I, uh, we, one, one thing that started, we were talking about fat tarted because I was talking about being fat tarted and she's like, look, I'm just, and she goes, you're not going to want to hear this. But you know, when you talk about being fat tarted and broke for 40 minutes, there are people that are fat are going to be upset. And there are people who are mentally challenged are going to be upset. I go, fuck that. No, they're not. They're not. I go, it's a joke. I go, I said it about me. I coined the term fat tarted about me. It's, it's, and she's just like, yeah, but you got to understand people are going to be this. And again, I go, I don't understand that. I don't care. I don't fucking care. You know what? I uh, give the, I said, <laughs> I, look, here's what I said. I go, give the fat people a sandwich, give the retards a, a balloon and let them all have a good time and we'll all have fun. You know why? Cause they're not really upset about what the fuck I said. They couldn't be, or they shouldn't be. Maybe they're upset about their lot in fucking life. I mean, maybe the, the people who are challenged aren't, they're not upset. The only thing they're worried about is the fact that their shirt's constantly wet and they don't know it's from their own drool. That's fucking it. But fuck, I'm like, so so fat tarted is bad now? I mean, I get it. it I guess it kind of is, but it was about me. The whole fucking song in the interlude is about me. Me coining that phrase was about me. It's about the fact that my fucking head is so fucked up from being fat and from other things in my fucking life that I ordered a ton of food to fucking hide and hide behind it and build a fucking wall of fat that I can hide myself inside. It's fucking stupid. I go to therapy to learn about it all the fucking time. And then Lily's like, we well, better get a new therapist because it's not working. I'm like, fuck, man. I, okay. Well, no, maybe I get a, I get a new me. Maybe I'd figure me out. But she's telling me about fat tarted is wrong. And I'm like, dude, you know what? Fuck this. Honestly, let's, I, you know what? You know what? In the Venn diagram, you know what both fat people and retarded people like? Cake. That's what they can fucking agree on. Fat people can eat it and retarded people can plunge their hands in it and play with it like it's fucking a wet sand. So there you go. I'll give the fat people and the retarded people a cake that just says, we fat tarted is okay. And they can all eat and play with it. And that'll be fine. We'll all get along. Will that be okay? By the way, that wasn't even the thing that got me kicked out of the house. <laughs> That was just part of the discussion. That was just part of us talking. Uh, but but I was just, because I just said, man, I'm, you know what? I've never thought I'd agree with the Beach Boys any time in my life like I do now. But there's a song they have called I Just Wasn't Made for These Times. And maybe I'm not made for these times. I mean, I, I know I have privilege. I guess I'm a white dude and I, I say things that I shouldn't say or I couldn't say. And I guess people are upset by that or I, I don't know. And maybe it's keeping me niche and, and maybe you guys are out there and maybe you cringe when I say shit. I don't fucking know, man. I don't. But this show has been going on now for fucking 10 years and I've been able to say whatever the fuck I wanted. That's the whole point. It's like when I did the fucking uh, the weird panel at the fucking uh, uh, the pod fest. And they were just like, well, here's the thing. You need to understand that when you want advertisers, you know, they're going to they're gonna have a say. And I'm like, I don't, I, no, that's not how it works on my show. And people are like, well, I got into a fight with fucking the girl from Keith and. I mean, she's fucking, she's like, I, well, I can't believe you'd be like that. It just seems kind of like amateurish. And I'm like, I, I, this is the only thing I own. If I want to go to a network, if I want to go to fucking work on TV or I want to go anywhere else and, and I have producers and people like that telling me what the fuck to do, I will do it. If it's your project, tell me what you need me to fucking do. Guess what? This is my project. And you know what the only fucking rule is? I get to say whatever the fuck I want. Anything goes. That's the way it should be. At least I thought. But also, I'm a normal person who has an arbiter inside his head who tells you what you should and shouldn't do. Do I go too far sometimes? Yeah, maybe. Do I hit your guys' fucking soft spot sometimes? Probably. 
Have people bailed on me because of that? Yes, they have. It's funny. We had that section in the fucking interlude where I was like, you know what? Here's the deal. Because uh, when Max and I were writing it, I said, dude, because he, he wrote, look, he wrote all the fucking lyrics for the fucking interlude, except for the ones where I'm talking. If I'm talking, I, I wrote them except in the rap song. Who the fuck cares? You don't care. Nobody cares about credit. We both did it. But he fucking did most of it, like three quarters, man, eh, seven eighths. But when we fucking were thinking of the idea and he was telling me about that rap song, I go, dude, I want a section where we pour one out for the people who aren't with us anymore. And he's like, I like that idea. I go, dude, so it's like, it'll be this part where, like, is there are people who've blocked me on Facebook? I don't even know who the fuck they are, why they did it. I don't know how I lost them. I don't know. But there are people who were huge longtime listeners of this show and then they just fucking bailed on me. And like I said, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago where uh, a, a guy named Rick wrote me and he's like, hey, Adam's gone because of this. Um, well, we put guys in the song. We put people who were like in the interlude. It was just like, we, you know, that segment of the rap song where fucking Max is pouring one out for the people who've left us behind. And I was like, well, that's fucking amazing. I love it fucking so much. And, uh, and one of those people wrote me. I'll just say his name. Dave Fogerson wrote me. He blocked me on Facebook. I have no fucking idea why. But he wrote me a note and just said, still a fan. And the bot, he's like, Jesus. He goes, well, now I've been mentioned in like three separate shows and the interludes. So I should probably go ahead and write you and tell you that I still listen every week and I'm still a fan of the show. But for personal reasons, I've had to take a step back from social media and stuff like that. Now, look, I don't know what blocking me does. I don't even know if he has a fucking page on Facebook anymore. All I know is he blocked me and he disappeared. But it was really nice of him to reach out because I've, I always been puzzled by the fact. And I'm not puzzled. Look, I know eventually, like I've said, you know, I'm a scorpion. You hang out wrong long enough, you're going to get fucking stung. It's going to happen. You're giving me that right. You're letting a scorpion walk all over your fucking arms and shoulders, and you're just waiting. You're waiting for him to plunge his fucking tail right into you. That's all you're doing. You guys are waiting for me to plunge my tail directly into one part of you, and you're hoping it'll be like your arm or your shoulder and not your eye or your balls. That's what you're hoping. You're letting me walk all over you, and that's fine, and I agree. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, but eventually I will say the thing that makes you upset and you'll write me and hopefully I can smooth it over. I'll tell you, Hey, look, this is kind of the way it is. And, and then you'll either say yes, or you'll say, you'll go get the fuck out of my house. Maybe you'll do that. Maybe you'll kick me the fuck out of your house. Um, but that's what I said to that fucking, to the girl. I was like, dude, I, and look, her name's Chandra. I know, but I would say, Hey, you know, this is the only thing I own. This is what I own. So I can do, I can say what the fuck I want. I do what I want. That's my point. It's my show. And on your guys' show, like I told you, I've done millions of podcasts and they're like, all right, we got to be out of here in an hour. All right, we got to get done soon. All right, we got to do this. We got advertisers. I'm like, good for you. I'm glad. Fucking that's great. And if I had advertisers who came up with enough money, I got news for you. I'd wear a bow tie on the fucking air and I'd talk about fucking Maya Cynthia Gravis or whatever the fuck they wanted me to talk about. By the way, I have no idea why the sponsors would want me to talk about Maya Cynthia Gravis. I don't know who that is. Uh... (laughs) <laughs> just some fucking weird disease. Mike, hi, we're the people from Lupus. Here's a thousand dollars. Talk, mention us. What would that do on a podcast? Hey guys, remember Lupus? <laughs> it was fucking hysterical. He was on the fucking Bad News Bears. Uh, him and Tanner, and they're swearing and drinking beer. And then Walter Matthau's there. And then Vic Morrow comes out and slaps his kid. And then a helicopter cuts his head off. What fun we had with the Bad News Bears. <laughs> oh, Kelly Leak. Uh, and then he grew up to be Rorschach, right? Moody. And became, no, he didn't become Moody. He became Rorschach. Was he Moody? He's not Moody. No, Moody's in another fucking... Uh, Moody's the mean guy who beats up. Oh, Matt Dillon's Moody. Look at how I bring it back. Fuck yeah. Ha ha ha. I bring it back. Matt Dillon is fucking Moody in my bodyguard. And he makes fucking Chris make peace his life with fucking living terror until Adam Baldwin shows up to help him out. Fucking fantastic. But then unfortunately, Matt Dillon, Moody, hires a fucking bald bodybuilder to go ahead and fight Adam Baldwin. Go see my bodyguard, folks. It's a fucking fantastic movie. Look at all the things Matt Dillon does. This is what he used to do before he retired to his house with a fucking Mambo record. I used to love that guy. He did all sorts of fucking badass things. He's out there. He's in My Bodyguard. He's in uh, uh, Over the Edge. Oh, my God. Watch Over the Edge. If you haven't seen Over the Edge, there are movies out there that you haven't seen. I've talked about them on here. You should see them. Go watch Fandango with Kevin Costner. Go watch Over the Edge with Matt Dillon. Go to Matt Dillon's Instagram page and watch My Life with Mambo with his fucking 78 player as he fucking spins it and plays tunes. Hey, hey, hey Mambo. Mambo Italiano. That's what Dillon likes. Um, so the point is, uh, as I sit here and I, I talk about the, the advantages of lupus, uh, the point is I don't want to fight anymore. I don't, but I kind of do. Like, I, I really want to. I'm going to get my dukes up and fucking brawl like a motherfucker. But at the same time, I just want to settle back and not fight. I mean, it's like, it's, like I said, I have a third of my life left. I got 25 years left. I just want to be happy. I want to be happy. I want to, I just want, I just want to be happy and I want pussy. And let me tell you that those will go hand and fucking pussy. That's exactly how they'll do it. I want hand and pussy and pussy and hand and pussy all over my, I just, I, that's all I want. That's it. That's it. This might explain one of the reasons why I'm on edge. It's been, it's been a fucking while, man. And I just want to, I just want to dive fucking in. That's all I want to do. 
Uh, hi. <laughs> probably, I should probably tone it down a little bit here and not tell you about that kind of stuff. What if I did? What if I just got fucking straight up blue until it, and just made this like a audio erotica type of deal? Go ahead and put on your tweaked audio earbuds, man. And fucking, uh, you, you want to do auto erotic asphyxiation? This time, plug them in and I'll talk you through it. Yeah, that's right. Grab a handful. Ladies, just go ahead. Fucking uh, spit on a couple of fingers and let's get this done. <clears throat> or three fingers. Maybe you're a three finger girl. Maybe you go four fingers. Maybe you go palm. Ooh. Or maybe, you know, like that's, I don't know. Maybe you go toy. There's a lot of toys you can use. Maybe you go, uh, I, because I'll, I'll admit, uh, I was, we were, there was a time recently where I was looking at a lot of toys with some, uh, with a friend of mine and uh, she was a fan. And so we, we would look, and there, there's shit on there that I just, I don't even, it just looks bananas. Like, uh, or I'm not going to get into vibrator talk, but maybe I am. Well, remember we were going to talk about, like we should have my face on there for the rabbit. All right. I don't want to fight anymore is the point. And it, and it winds up where like every day there, there's a thing where it's like, I, I should be fighting. And it's not every day, but every other day, or maybe every, every fucking, every day, fuck. This happened. I picked up a fucking people in Uber. And look, that's what I'm doing. I've been driving my fucking ass off because, you know, most of this week I'm going to be off with the mod. Um, we're going to see Baby Driver. I know that. We're going to see Spider-Man next week. We're going to fucking wrestling. And then uh, I know we're going to $500 sushi. I don't know what the fuck else we're doing, but we're doing all that stuff. So uh, what we're doing, uh, I'm driving Uber, trying to make some cash. And it was closing time, man. It's like right around 2 in the a.m. It's bar time, 2 in the morning. So I'm down in Venice. And I had a couple of short runs. And what the thing is, you're trying to do, you're trying to score between 1.30 and 2.30. You're trying to get a long ride is what you'd like because the surge is high. So you'd like to take somebody 30 miles on a three surge and make 100 bucks. That would be great. But it doesn't happen very often. It happens where I'll get lucky. I'll take like a 15 to 18 mile ride for a two and a half surge. I don't give a fuck. If I get a 30 or a $40 ride, I'm happy. I'd like to get more than that. Or I'd like to get like four $8 rides within, you know, people going a mile. That'd be fucking great. Uh, you don't care about the strategies of Uber. I'll go on. You know, I should put out a separate podcast about that. It's so funny. Whenever anybody's in my Uber, they ask me, they'll be talking about what I've done and how this, and I'll tell them a couple of things that have happened. And they go, man, there should be a show like called Uber Stories. And I want to go, do you have Google? Do you by any chance have Google? Because guess what? I got news for you. There's a million fucking shows like that. There's all sorts of dudes out there. Now, are they as good and talented as I am? No, of course they're not. Uh, but I also didn't want this show to just become fucking Uber Stories. But unfortunately, my life has become so small that that's what I fucking do. If I'm not getting tossed out of somebody's house or having to walk away from somebody, uh, then I'm, I'm in the middle of a fucking imbroglio in my car. Uh, I talked to my mom. It was my mom's birthday today. I called my mom for her birthday. And uh, she just, she's in bed. She's like, yeah, that's what I did. I said to sleep in today. She goes, I'll tell you what. She goes, I'm here in Florida. She goes, I'm 74 years old today. And uh, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with my gastroenteritis thing. And, and uh, you know, I've beaten cancer three times. And, and now, you know, we live in this, uh, this, this assisted, it's not assisted, it's a, a, an old folks, you know, it's a home. It's a fucking, it's not a home. It's a, a suburb. You know what I mean? They have this really nice kind of, it's like a trailer house. And they live there and it's got a screened in porch. And, they, you know, you can smoke ribs on the, I, when I went there, I had a fucking great time. We had, we had the best time when we went there. Um, you know, me and Jill are just sitting on the fucking patio with my parents and they're, and they're smoking ribs and we're hanging out. It was just fucking awesome. Uh, but my mom is not that. And so today she's just like, yeah, I'll tell you what, I'm just, I'm staying in bed today. I'm not getting up. You know, I stopped going to that bingo because, you know, my hand hurts and I got to go for all these procedures. And I, I, Michael, I hate it here. <laughs> like, what do you mean? She goes, I hate it here. She goes, the other day there was like, apparently they, they saw a rat at the clubhouse. She goes, there was a rat and I saw like a big Florida roach at the clubhouse. She goes, and it's not like it's dirty here. That's just, this isn't, you know, it's the, the fucking weather brings them out. So, you know, we're there and they got rats and they got roaches and they're fucking, and I, you know, that I had to deal with that shit when I was little. You know, when we lived in a tenement when we were small, I'm going backwards. I'm 74 years old. I'm going backwards, Michael. What am I doing with my life? <laughs> and she just starts laughing. And I'm like, Ma, I don't know, man. But way to give me fucking hope for the next 25 years of my goddamn life. And uh, she laughs. She goes, you're not recording me for your show, are you? I go, no, but I'm going to fucking talk about this. She goes, well, come on, don't do that. I said, well, I'm going to. And she said, well, I just don't know, Michael. I'll tell you, I just, you know, it's just, it's just, we're here. And I thought I'd be able to fucking travel, but the cancer's got me laid up so much. We got to stay here for appointments and I might've beaten it three times, but it's always just hanging around and you never know. And I said, I know, Ma, it's fucking, that's life. She goes, that's life. Don't get old, Michael. And I go, all right, thanks, Ma. Thanks for the tip. I don't know what old means. I mean, I guess 74 is old to my Ma. But, uh, but I picked these dudes. So I'm in Venice the other day and the thing is you got to fucking hustle at bar time. And uh, I pulled up to this bar and it's a woman and she's standing there and she goes, hey, I, two of my friends are drunk. They're still in the bar. And I'm like, fuck. I go, look, we got to hurry up. I go, because it's, you know, it's bar time. So I got to pick up as many people as possible. I, I, I'm, 
around that time of night, I'm just nakedly aggressive about it. I'm like, look, man, this is the way it goes. I got to pick people up. And, and if you can't go, I'll cancel you. So she goes, just give me one second. And then she goes, oh, they just texted me. They're on their way out. So they come out and they're not like egregiously drunk. It's, it's her and another woman and a dude. And the dude gets out, he gets in my car and he sits behind me. The two girls are in, we all know, but a dude sitting fucking behind me, but all three of them are in the back seat. So I'm driving and it turns out, you know, they're only going fucking four and a half miles, which again, it's a short ride. I can drop them off, but that's pushing it too, because that, that ride takes like 11 minutes. So that takes a little bit of the time off of bar time. It's a fucking game. The whole thing's a video game. It's ridiculous. Um, like you don't want somebody who's going six miles at bar time because it fucks you up. It takes you out of the sea because you, you, you have to drive them to where they're going. And then you got to drive the six miles back to where all the fucking people are. In the meantime, everybody else is getting picked up and the surge is going away. It's the fucking worst. Hi, nobody cares about this fucking strategy, but you got a strategy at work. I'm sure it's my strategy too. So here's the deal. I, I wind up doing this. I pick them up and they're going like four and a half miles and I'm like, fuck. So we start driving and uh, it was down on... Uh, you know, near Pacific Coast Highway, whatever. It was, on, it was on Pacific in Venice, whatever. You don't know where the fuck it was. But uh, it was near the beach. We're driving, taking some side roads, and they're on the back. They're talking. It was the one girl's birthday, and, and it seems fine, but the guy's totally drunk. He's, like, really drunk. And uh, he's being kind of a stick-in-the-mud, obnoxious dick. But not to me, just to them. And uh, But then he's like, oh, that girl, you know, she, I thought she wanted me. I was trying to wait for her to get out, but it's okay. And, you know, happy birthday, here, darling. Uh, whatever, that fucking birthday garbage, drunk nonsense. So I'm driving, and I come to Main Street uh, near Santa Monica, and I, I pull up to the light, and uh, about four people go to cross in front of us. And uh, it's four dudes. And the girls are just talking in the back seat, and the guy rolls down his window, and he goes, faggots! Uh, hey, faggots! And uh, he says it twice. And I, I just literally, I close my eyes like, what the fuck are you doing? And I look and there's only, literally there's only another two miles. And in my head I go, I could pull over and throw them the fuck out. But it's bar time. I'm just trying to finish this ride and get more fucking money. It's all I want to do. Get them the fuck out of here. Because normally, if anybody does dumb shit like that, I'm right on it. I drunk or not, just get the fuck out of my car. I don't, I don't have time to fucking babysit you and deal with this bullshit. So then the, and also then the girls jumped in and went, oh my God, oh my God. And they said his name and I won't say his fucking name. Peter was, like, well, what the fuck, who cares? So like, oh my God, Peter, you can't talk like that. You can't do that. Oh my God. And the guy, luckily the people in the crosswalk didn't even turn around and look, you know, uh, and, and he just goes, why not? What do you mean? Why not? And they go, don't say that. That's not nice. And he goes, faggot, 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 faggot. He says it five more times. And I, then the light turned green and I hit the brakes and I went, listen, I go, don't do that. He goes, what? I go, don't do that. Or you can get out of the fucking car. And the girl goes, we're really sorry. He's drunk. And I go, I know he's drunk, but don't do that. All right, fine, whatever, man. I, I, unbelievable, you know. Uh, so again, muttering in the back, and I drive. Uh, I drive about another mile. I come to a stop sign. I go to turn right, and um, like I said, he's directly behind me. And uh, I see it. I see it about to happen. I see his eyes. I see him ready to fucking do it. Uh, I got my hair pulled back, and uh, I got my wayfarers on. <laughs> And I can tell you, my love for you will still be strong after the boys of summer have been dropped off and I can get another fucking road trip on my fucking day as in the car. But I see him. He looks at me. He's looking in the mirror. He's sizing me up. I know he's waiting to do it. And he just fucking reaches forward and he grabs my fucking ponytail and he yanks my head back. I'm a mile from where he's supposed to be. I'm a, a fucking mile. And I just, I'm in the middle of the fucking street. And I just, I hit the brakes and I go, you fucking touch me? You put your fucking hands on me? And he goes, what, man? Chill out, bro. And the girls are like, oh my God, what are you doing? Peter, what are you doing? And I go, get the fuck out. That's it. Fuck you. Get out. And I turned right into a, garage, a parking lot of a gas station. And he goes, well, I'll get out, but you take them where they're going. I go, fuck you. Everybody out of my car. Out. You don't put your hands on me. Who the fuck do you think you are? Get out of my car. And I'm mad. And I want to fight. But at the same time, I'm trying to make money at bar time. And I'm like, what am I going to do? Get out and have a fucking lethal weapon duke out with this motherfucker in a gas station parking lot while two chicks watch. And also, I don't have a dash cam. So they could just say I beat the fuck out of the guy and I was for no reason. I, I'm just, and I'm doing everything I can to stay an adult and stay composed. But I pull into the gas station parking lot. He goes, I'm not getting, he goes, I'll get out, but you take them. And I go, I'm not taking taking them. Everybody get the fuck out. And they pull, I pull up and they immediately, the girls want out because they can sense the tension in the fucking car. So they get out and we're like, really sorry. Oh my gosh, sir. We're really sorry. We'll give you five stars. We're really sorry. And they get out and he won't get out of the car. He's sitting behind me. 
I go, dude, get out of the fucking car. You know what, man? You're fucking, you're a dick. Get out of my fucking car. Dude, you know, you're a jagoff, man. He didn't say jagoff. You're a, you're a jerk. You're, you're a fucking dick, man. And he's just talking shit to me. And the girls are on the side of the road and they're going, Peter, get out. Peter, will you get out? And he goes, you're supposed to be a man, bro. You're supposed to be a man, bro. You want to settle us like fucking men? And I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, you have no fucking idea how badly I want to settle us like fucking men. I want to get out of here and I want to bite your fucking nose right off your face and spit it down your fucking throat so you got to shit it out and smell your shit on the way out, you fuck. I want to fucking drive my thumbs into your fucking ears and pop your fucking eardrums so the only thing you hear for the rest of your life is your own thoughts inside your fucking head making yourself realize you made yourself deaf because you called me the fuck out, you fuck. But I can't. I can't get out of the fucking car. I'm behind the wheel and I'm like, get out. Just get out. Get the fuck out, dude. Get out. Get out. You're supposed to be a man, bro. You want to sit on like fucking men? You're supposed to be a man. You're a fucking pussy, man. You're a fucking pussy. Dude, get out of my car. Get the fuck out of my car. He gets out, but he won't close the door. You know, you're a pussy, man. You're a p-. And the girls are like, come on, Peter, we got to go. Please, we got to go. And I, look, I just got to get the fuck away from this guy so I can go try to make more fucking money and also make a fucking report and, and, and also so I can keep myself from murdering him. And I'm sitting there in the fucking car and I'm white knuckling the fucking steering wheel and he's just jawing and jawing and finally he goes, fuck you, man, you're a fucking pussy. And he spits in my car on the back seat and slams the door as hard as he can with both hands. And that was it. That was all I needed. Uh, you gonna do that shit? You gonna fucking spit in my car? You gonna slam my fucking door? Look, you called me a pussy. You called me the fuck out. You did all that shit the whole time and I fucking ate it. You spit in my car. That's it. I can't, I can't abide by that shit. I can't do it. And, uh, and so I fucking, I immediately, I threw the car in park like that, that fucking noise and I fucking flung my door open and he ran. He fucking ran. He ran away like the pussy he kept calling me for fucking 90 seconds. He fucking tucked his fucking Peter fucking yelling slurs at the goddamn crosswalk tail between his fucking pussy legs and he ran away from me. How the fuck do you run? How do you call me the fuck out, spit in my car, call me a pussy, put your hands on me and then you fucking run away from me? How do you sleep that night? How do you sleep any night? I ducked a fight in fucking high school that I still think about every fucking day. I actually found the guy on social media so I could contact him just so I could fucking fight him now to get that L off my record. And you half drunk pussy with two girls, you fucking call me out, you call me a bunch of shit, you put your fucking hands on me, you spit in my car like a fucking woman and you run off. Yeah, I know not like a woman. Woman is a bad thing. It's my privilege. I don't mean like woman means weak or fuck. I know I got to explain everything now. Fuck. But he ran away from me. He ran away. I didn't even get out of the car. I literally threw it in park and I flung the door open. And I put one foot on the ground and I saw him run in the rear view mirror. I turned around and I saw him running, sprinting. You fucking pussy. Because I would have, because at that point, forget it. Now, now I'll, I'll run over a fucking goddamn fire hydrant and we can go ahead and have it out. Instead, he ran and I closed the fucking door and I went to go try to make more money. And I shook my head again because I put myself in this fucking circumstance. This is my fault. It's my fault I drive these people around. It's my fault that I have to do that. Now, look, you're trying to make a living. There ain't no such thing as pride, and we all have a job. We all make those things, and we make those decisions, and we do the things we have to do. But one thing I am learning in therapy is that it's not all my fucking fault. And it's no shame to go out there and try to be the best you can be, no matter what it is that you're doing. The key, though, is to make the thing you're doing the thing you want to be doing, so when you're the best at it, it matters. When you're doing your best work at the thing you want to be doing, everything fucking comes together. And that's what I plan on doing going forward. I mean, I've been trying to do it too, but I mean, uh, every day, every time I do this fucking show, I want it to be the best it can possibly be. And, uh, and that's what I plan on doing going forward. Whether it's just me here talking to you guys or whether it's everybody who's supposed to fucking be here, uh, I, want, I want to be the best at this that I possibly can be. And I think you guys know who I am. And I think you know all about me. I think in 10 fucking years, you know exactly who I am. Whether I say things or I do things, eventually, yeah, I'm going to piss you off or I'm going to make you go, what the fuck? Something will happen. Uh, But after 10 years, I think you know enough about who I am to understand. And I think more importantly, after 49 years, I'm starting to figure that out myself. 
you guys can get me at Mike at MikeSchmidtComedy.com. You can be my friend at Facebook.com slash The40YearOldBoy. You can follow me at Twitter.com slash The40YearOldBoy. You can find me at Snapchat, Mike40YOB, and at Instagram, Mike40YOB. And you can find Nick Diaz on Instagram as well if you want to see a bunch of fucking beards and tattoos smoking spliffs and pointing at the camera like they're somebody's fuck. Why am I plugging his Instagram? Uh, so again, find me at all those places, Instagram, Snapchat. I like talking to everybody, uh, W nouns. I love talking to you and, uh, Taint Lewis. And I mean, everybody out there who's uh, reaching out, Amanda, everybody on Snapchat that I wind up having discussions with our friend, Ben. Uh, I like talking to people, Lisa, everybody find me on Snapchat. It's pretty cool. And, uh, Instagram also as well. Although it's less about contacting me and more about liking my posts, like my posts, damn it. Our friend David Hernandez is the, uh, he's the best. He's the guy who does all of the music and the artwork for this show. You can find him at many different places, but more importantly, go to facebook.com slash David Max Hernandez and be his friend there. Uh, find out all his Max memes and see all the cool stuff that he does on the page. And also go to artbydmh.com. That's A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com. Find him there. He's the man. He's doing all sorts of artwork. He can do custom stuff for you. He's got Valscapes and Guycons. You can check those out. Those are for sale. Uh, he put up a triple joker today that I think is for sale as well. Go to artbydmh.com, A-R-T-B-Y-D-M-H.com. Buy all the cool stuff that David offers or order him to do a cool thing for you. Or, you know what? Order him to do a lame thing for you. You get enough money, he'll cough up some lame stuff. That's what to do he's that kind of guy he'll make lame if you pay him enough <laughs> i would fuck I mean, again 10 years uh so please contact dave and find all that stuff and buy cool things remember that super fan geo not super fan of me but super fan of others uh is available you can go to get his podcast he does the pod gods podcast he does all of the love line reboots all of the stuff where he's finding the old he's refurbishing i don't fucking know what he does but i know he's super fucking busy but super fan geo is our coolest guy and he does great things for us thank you geo um, remember that Ryan Dirks is the web guy. Go to facebook.com slash Ryan Dirks and become his friend on there. Contact him and be his pal. He's the best. Uh, I should probably get a hold of him, talk about some web stuff, but of course you need money to do that. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to spend the next week eating $500 sushi and going to wrestling. So I don't know where the fucking time I'm going to get to drive anybody around. Hi, how you doing? My life is interesting. I love it. I wouldn't fucking trade it. It's fucking cool as hell. But at the same time, you know, think about that later when I come to you and I go, hi, I need $4 because I have a cold. Go fund me, dick. Uh, all right, so we're all available and we're all cool. And uh, is there? And uh, our great friend Lily Von Stupp is the uh, you know she produces this show. And uh, if you want to find her, she's at all sorts of different places. You go to Facebook.com/slash Lily Von Stupp and uh, be her friend on there. Reach out to her and become her pal. And uh, she's also available at several different. You know, she's got her uh, Instagram. She's got the Monday Night Tees Instagram. She's also at Twitter. Twitter.com/slash Lily Von Stupp. Twitter.com/slash Monday Night Tees. Nope, twitter.com slash MNTs, twitter.com slash HollywoodBQFest, twitter.com slash Boobdini. Uh, but if you'd like to write her a personal note and, uh, and, and get her take on this whole thing, believe me, she does not want that. Absolutely. Hold on. Let me, re- let me rephrase that. If you'd like to write her a personal note and just say, hi, I hope you're well, that would be perfect probably this week. Uh, go ahead and check in with her and say that to her and write her at lily at burlesque411.com. That's lily, L-I-L-I, at burlesque411.com. <laughs> Lily, should I even start here for? Lily, should I close the Zazzle store? Why would 
Didn't Max let me sing that line? Hush now, shitty, shitty, don't you cry. Lily's gonna upload your podcast for you. Lily's gonna edit it and title it too. Lily's gonna keep you on some kind of pot. But you won't get grossed out when you mention your cock. Lily's gonna help Schmitty with all of her might. Want to remind you folks about the Monday Night Tees every Monday night at the Three Clubs on Vine at Santa Monica. Uh, you know, I happen to know the producer of that show. Her name is Lily Von Stupp. She's not with us today, but I know she'll always be at the Monday Night Tees hanging out and cooling out and chilling out. Without a doubt, it's all about hanging out. That might be a new edition song. Is that crew? Is that true? Crew? Is that crew? What's up, crew? <laughs> uh, you may hear people yelling in my courtyard because it's fucking hot and I have a window open. You can hear them? Because it's a little cute. It makes a lot of noise. He doesn't know when to shut up. Doesn't know there's recording going on. Now I should eggshell the fuck out of these walls and make sure nobody could get in here and be noise resistant, sound proof, if you will. Uh, but instead, don't you like the sound of atmosphere? Don't you like, uh, they, they only imitate their atmosphere. No child is bad from the beginning. Prince knew that. They only imitate their atmosphere. All right, so. Uh, the Monday Night Tease is a huge hit and loved by all and many, and uh, by many I mean all. I can tell you this right now, there's, a, there's been a Monday Night Tease every Monday night for the last like 30 years, that seems high. But still, I mean, that's a lot of labia. So, I mean, go check it out, man. See a lot of ladies and they're pink. Now, I will tell you this story right now. Uh, I'm going to be there this this weekend, or this week, I should say, July 3rd. 
Uh, well, all right, let's just do this. The Monday Night Tease is there. Go to facebook.com slash Monday Night Tease and go ahead and sign up for all of the stuff that's going to come to you and give you information about the shows. You will see what ladies are going to be there. Uh, follow, like I said, follow the, the Twitter account for our good friend Lily Von Stupp at twitter.com slash MNTs. Gives you all the information you need. I don't know who's going to be there this coming week, but the show is always running and it's always killing it. So please get tickets and go out and check out the Monday Night Tease today. Well, not today, Monday, <laughs> this week. Go Monday. But what I wanted to say was July 3rd, there's a Monday Night Tease. That's the, look, that's the day before the Bicentennial. I don't know who, well, it's not the Bicentennial, just America's Independence Day, whatever you want to call it. But I can tell you this, July 3rd, there's also a 202020. That's right. There's a 202020. That show is going to be there. Uh, go check it out. It's going to be me and the very funny Emily Maya Mills and the fantastic Dave Waite. That's July 3rd. Tickets are on sale now at uh, 202020. That's uh, 202020.bpt.me. This little kid is yelling and driving me fucking crazy. Shut up, kid. I'm doing a fucking show. <laughs> uh, so 202020.bpt.me. That's where their tickets. He did it again right when I fucking started talking. Uh, those tickets are available now. And they will be up until Monday afternoon, I believe. But uh, go see me, Emily Maya Mills, and the lovely Dave Waite. We're fantastic. We're funny. We're together. It's going to be a great show. I think I made a promise for that show. If I did, remind me. I don't remember because I don't have a producer here to tell me exactly what I've said in the past. She would know, but I swear to God, I said I would do something that night, and I don't know what it is. So write me. Uh, write me personally. Write it on the Joker's page. Do something, for fuck's sake. What are you doing out there? Get useful. Make yourself useful. Go out in the courtyard. Tell that kid to shut the fuck up. Um... But please remind me and let me know what it is I'm supposed to be doing. And then if you can come out to the show, listen to this. Get this. There's a Monday Night Tease that night as well. So there's a 2020 at 730. And then there's a Monday Night Tease at 10. And I'm going to be at uh, certainly the 2020. And guess who else is going to be there? My friend Ahmad. That's right. Ahmad with a seven directly in the middle from Kuwait is in town now. And he's going to be, uh, he's coming to 2020. And I said to him, I go, man, because I said to him, what do you want to do while you're in town? He goes, you know what, dude? I want to do uh, anything that's banned in my country. So I said, all right. Now, so today I said, you know, you're going to go to the Monday Night Tease with me on Monday. And he went, I, uh, I, don't, I don't know about that. I said, what are you talking about? He goes, well, that might be uncomfortable for me. I said, well, you know, wear loose pants, whatever the fuck. I mean, you know, the ladies get the job done and you can just hide in the back. It's dark. It's not like you get to stand up in the front and show everybody a mod cock. That's not going to happen. And, uh, and he's just like, well, I, it might be uncomfortable. I said, well, all right, I will let you decide. And you can tell me if you want to do that. But I mean, obviously that exists. If you want to do it, we're in. So I will see if he is somebody who wants to do that. But uh, either way, we will both be at 202020 and hopefully at the Monday Night Tees. Get all the tickets, please. Go to 202020.bpt.me for tickets to the show for me and Emily and Dave. You can meet Ahmad. You can say hi to me. We can go out and eat afterwards. Ahmad is not going to have any. Uh, I, was, I said, we'll go to the Oinkster. And he's like, I don't eat pork. I'm like, God damn it. I don't know what the fuck he's going to do over there. He might have a burger or some Belgian fries. Uh, but he doesn't eat Belgians either. I don't blame him. Uh, so anyway, me and Ahmad will be at the 2020 tickets are on sale now. And, uh, and then the Monday night teases afterwards to so come out and have a, a, a crazy doubleheader of fun at the three clubs on Vine and Santa Monica on July 3rd. Uh, please remember to go to our, let's see, uh, there's that. So that's 2020. Oh, and also, you know what? There's a show July 17th. Tickets are on sale for that as well for 2020. And that'll be me and Andy Wood and Hannah Michaels. That's Andy Wood. Yeah, that's right. It's Andy Wood from the Bridgetown Comedy Festival. That's Andy Wood from... Uh, Podfest, LA Podfest, no longer, but he was the first couple of years. <clears throat> but he's very funny and a good friend of mine and a strapping young man who's very good looking, so come out and check him out. He's a big uh, hunk of man flesh and also very funny. And Hannah Michaels, terrifically funny. So that's July 17th. Look at all the shows we got coming up, folks. Buy tickets now. Look at all the times I can tap into your pocket and tell you to give me shit. Uh, remember, we have a sponsor for this show. GetTheButters.com. Use the code 40YOB. That's 40YOB at GetTheButters.com. So you can buy a balm and a bomb and a, a butter and a lube. Butters and balms and bombs and lubes and everything else and a, and a loofah. And uh, I believe there's a scrub of some sort and there's a mask. You know what? Here's what you do. I, here's, and I, I say twist it around. I say you put the scrub on your, uh, the mask on your balls and the scrub on your face. Go that route. Although I guess it's not a ball scrub, really. Scrubs rally for your mask and your and your face and your uh, and your mask and scrub and balls. Fuck, I'm confused. Mask and scrubber for your face. Put them somewhere else. Scrub up your knees. Put a mask on your thigh. Go ahead and put a mask right on the, uh, right on your midsection, right on your abs, right on your six pack. Big, make a big six pack mask and cover that up. But go to getthebutters.com. Use the code 40YOB. Tell Jerome we sent you, and perhaps he'll send you a free lube. Who knows? Actually, you probably won't. But there are lubes, there's butters, those bombs, those bombs, butters and bombs and bombs and lubes all available to you right now. 
At GetTheButters.com with the code 40YLB, you save money, we get a taste of the gig, everybody's happy, and then we'll see you at Lake Waza Pamani, like Steve Lawrence in a fucking towel in the Blues Brothers. That's how it works out. Uh, so please go to GetTheButters.com, go to MikeSchmidtComedy.com, and go to the Joe Business page. We got all sorts of stuff on the Joe Business page still for sale. We got shirts, we got downloads, we got live stuff, we got the Heroes album available for free with a donation. We've got the the uh, Word Pimp Schmitty and the Misanthropic Gangster also available. Go to tweakedaudio.com. We've got a deal with them still where they use earbuds and uh, use the code 40, uh, I believe it's 40YOB, not Mike 40YOB, but use the code 40YOB just like you get the butters.com and get some autoerotic asphyxiation earbuds and you get yourself some cockering watches. Go ahead and grab all that stuff. Man, I hope Tweaked is still in business. I haven't talked to them in a while, but, but if they are, I'm assuming our code will still work. Go there and try it. You know, if anything, it's worth it just for the social experiment. Go see if my code works. I know you probably don't want a cockering watch. I know, although you've probably worn yours out from the first year, when Tweak stepped up and offered them. So it's about time you replace that cockering watch. You know what? Go get four cockering watches. Wear them at once. Oh, and then you, then you get a real throbbing heart on if you wear four cockerings at once. And you'll always know what time it is. Look right down. Time to time to get to the hospital and have them cut off these four cockering watches before I get a preapism. Is that what it is? A preapism? Preapism. I don't know. Uh, so the getthebutters.com, use the code 40YLB, MikeSchmidtComedy.com. Please remember, we've got all of the cool stuff there. we got the Amazon link. That's a big thing. I forgot to mention that last week. If you use our Amazon link, uh, we get money, they get money, you get stuff. It's perfect. It's the best way to help the show, the quickest way, certainly the most painless way. You're buying stuff at Amazon anyway, so why not use our link? Just go ahead and zoom in there and buy your stuff, and then we get a little part of it off the top. It's fantastic. Thank you for thinking of us. Go use our Amazon link. Go to the Joe Business page. Click on the Amazon banner right there, the, the thing that says Amazon, and then it'll take you to our store. I'm sure you don't want anything in there, but click through to the actual Amazon store, and there's a world of products for you to purchase. Some Whole food stuff, some Nike stuff, plenty of stuff available there at Amazon.com. Please use our link so we get a taste. Thank you. You're the best. Uh, remember that Superfan Geo has put together the YouTube page. That is up and it is running and it is gorgeous. All of my past is available now in the present at YouTube. Uh, over, I think there's over 480 shows, 480 clips up there right now. Go listen to old shows. And like I said, play roulette, man. Go to, go to like year four and pull up uh, episode 11 and listen to that. You know what? Go to year nine. Listen to episode eleven. Listen to nine eleven. That's uh, and uh, look. Don't you'll never forget it. I can tell you this. You will never forget that episode. Uh, but check it out. Go ahead and listen to those shows. They're cool and they're the best. But they're available at YouTube. And you know what? Subscribing is a cool thing. If you don't want to listen, I get that. Maybe uh, you're just being selfish at that point. But I guess I understand. But if you go ahead and sign up to subscribe to said station, subscribe to my YouTube channel, it lets people think I'm a hitter. It lets them think I got some stroke. It lets them think that I'm the man. Uh, as Joe Jackson would say. So go ahead and uh, become a subscriber, and then, uh, I don't know, good things will happen for me. I, it, that could be a lie. I'm just kind of, I'm faking it at this fucking point, right? Right. Uh, go to Amazon.com, like I said, use our link. Uh, oh, and also, ooh, hey, guess what? We've still got the Patreon page rolling. Thank you to anybody and all people. You know, here's this, listen to this, Super Fangio lowered his monthly tribute on, on, on there because, uh, you know, he's a guy with, he stretches himself thin and I should be giving him money, quite frankly, because he also has a Patreon page uh, and Lily has a Patreon page. Like everybody I fucking know has a Patreon page now, but I'm here to talk about mine, God damn it, mine. Uh, become a person who uses it. Now, look, you're going to say, Mike, there's no new content on there. I know, but there are big plans, man. I'll be filming stuff and putting stuff up and just, uh, I'm, I'm baiting the hook now. Uh, I, I owe people messages on there. It's a, it, I know you're thinking to yourself, what, it's a dormant ghost town. It's not, it's none of the d things that you're thinking. It's nothing of the sort. It's a, f a vibrant community led by me and soon to be filled with audio clips and video clips and then me staring at you. See, this is the thing. I want to go on the road so I can bring a lot of cool video clips. Nobody wants to watch me talking to my fucking house at my desk, or maybe you do. Because I'll tell you what, again, on Instagram, I'm watching Anthony Bourdain and Asia Argento. That's why, oh, did I ever finish why they're having an affair? Because they're putting up together videos, but not together. But he's liking all her videos. And then uh, that was why I saw her name to subscribe to her. And then like tonight, I think it was today. Yeah, just today, Wednesday. Like she filmed the moon from a certain angle and he filmed the moon from a certain angle. I'm like, wait a minute, it's the same fucking thing. And they start watching their videos. He's walking through some small town in Italy. She's walking through the same town. So maybe they're keeping it on the quiet, keeping it on the silent. And maybe they're just good friends. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to make the leap that they're fucking. I mean, I don't want to be that guy. Uh, but at the same time, Bourdain and Argento, they think they're getting over on me. I'm, I'm an Instagram detective. I'm the best Instagram detective in the room. <laughs> Five people remember what the fuck that was. Uh, all right. So uh, please be a patron at the Patreon page. There's stuff coming. I swear. I mean it. 
Uh, it's not like well, let's put it this way. I have to get a selfie stick to do that because Lily normally would film it, but she's no longer here, at least not this week. She could be here next week. I don't know. We'll see. It's a coin flip. Um, and it's her decision. I'm not going to get into this bullshit again. I already talked about it earlier. Uh, but like I said, if you want to put it to a vote, I'll vote for it. But if you want to, if you want to fucking, <laughs> God, all of a sudden I would have Mr. Pink the shit out of this thing. God damn it. You're damn right. Um, you're acting like a couple of first year thieves. Uh, so folks, you know what this is? It's the world's smallest violin playing for the fucking people who don't want me to say what I want to say. All right. Uh, hi. Anyway, folks, like I said, Amazon link, Patreon is available. The YouTube channel, Jerome is running. I get the butters. Uh, I want to go ahead and cover a couple of things here really quickly that have to be mentioned. Uh, number one, and this is another thing that I'm upset about and, uh, I don't wish to be, but I am, I'm just going to, I'm going to go ahead and say it right now. Hey, uh, uh, August in Kansas city is not happening. It's, it's just not, um, because I was told that there was a theater that we had booked and it was a done deal. And then, uh, I, that's why I announced it. I think you can even listen back to those shows and hear my hesitancy where I'm just like, are we sure? And I was told yes. And, um, I'm, I'm now told no, that theater is no longer going to be open from what I understand of it, even if it's even open now. Oh, that sounded like Porky Pig. Beep, 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 beep. Uh, and I have my own thoughts about this because honestly, that theater opened like six, eight months ago. And I know the person who opened it and I sent them a note and said, hey man, I'd love to come and do a show there. And I, I offered them money and I never heard back from them. And, uh, and then the show, you know, they did a bunch of shows and whatever. And then my, and then Lily contacted them and wanted to book a show. And then it turned out the thing went tits up. So I, I, I'm embarrassed because I fucking mentioned it to you guys and I hate doing that because that just looks like amateur night. It's bad enough that I look like amateur night just fucking shouting into a goddamn living room at some point. Um, even though I'm not, I mean, I'm a professional at this and whatever the fuck, but that's all shit in my head. But at the same time, if I tell you I'm going to be somewhere, I want to be there. You know, like Phoenix, when I announced Phoenix a couple of years ago and I had to fucking cash uh, that in and that was my own fault because I didn't fucking promote it the way I should have and it, it didn't do ticket sales the way it should have, so I cashed it. Uh, I should have just gone. Should have just fucking done the show. And that's the other fucking joint I did in Pittsburgh. You know, we didn't sell a ton of p tickets in Pittsburgh, but Jill was like, you're going, we're doing this. And we did, and we had a fucking amazing time. So now... Uh, I'm not even, you know, we didn't even get to put Kansas City on sale. Max was working on the fucking poster for me and all this shit, and it just fucking went under. And then Lily was looking for other venues, and it just looked like it wasn't going to come together. So I'm just calling a, I'm calling a rain out on it now. Kansas City's on the list. We'd love to get there before the end of the year. I'd still love to do a combination show with Lily. Who knows? But I, I have to start looking and doing things differently. And I certainly can't tell you about shit until it's fucking ready to go. So there you go. I apologize. August 12th in Kansas City is not happening. Uh, I, and I wanted it to desperately, but now it is not, but I'll be there at some point and, uh, and I will, we'll have burn ends at Oklahoma Joe's and fucking hang out. Speaking of hanging out, Toronto, remember I'm going to be there July 18th, 19th and 20th, at least I might leave the 21st, might leave the 22nd. I still haven't decided exactly when I'm leaving, but I know I'm getting to town on the 18th, hanging out with our good friend, Ken. We're going to that. Uh, we, th well, let's get into this real quick. He tried to buy tickets for the uh, Dave Thomas, Rick Moranis thing, and they told him, hey, you got a ticket. No problem. You got tickets. And uh, then he's been calling, and they've been going, well, we're trying to figure stuff out. Well, we've got seating issues. Well, we're... so they keep telling him he's going to get a ticket, but they're just trying to figure out when he's going to get them, where we're sitting, and, and how, and all the other fucking reasons why. So the bottom line is I'm going to be in Toronto. I'll be there the 18th, 19th, and 20th at least. Uh, if I go to that show on the night of the 18th, I'm not available, but the 18th, 19th, and 20th, man, I am available to hang out. We are, you know, Ken is there and we had talked about doing a show in his yard and I wasn't, I kind of wasn't kidding about it. Like Lily said it, but I don't think enough people would want to come out and do that. If there was a way to do it where we covered my airfare and shit like that, that'd be great. But if not, if it's just us hanging out, then that happens too. Cause I'm coming anyway. I mean, I, you know, I'm not going to lie to you. It's not like I'm going to just come there and go, Hey, give me money. <laughs> but, uh, but maybe I'd love to do a show. And look, it's up to you guys. I want to hear feedback from you. A lot of you people were kind of shocked about it. Because, again, you're behind on the fucking show. And you don't listen to this thing in the, in the moment. So I'll be there. And we're going to hang out. If you want to just fucking do a hangout, like we'll just, and just maybe a cookout or something, or we'll go to Ken's house because Ken mentioned it. If we just wanted to buy a bunch of fucking food and do the hang because Ken's got a big place. And I don't mean to invite Ken or uh, invite Ken's house into this. He wrote me that he's like, well, who could I talk to here in Toronto to kind of coordinate. I said, well, my, you know, my contact there is Ken. <laughs> he was not thrilled to hear that. So, uh, 
So if anybody out there wants to take point on this and if anybody out there wants to hang out, like I said, there were people who were checking. Michelle, I know, checked. And these people were like, is he really going to be here? And yes, I am. I'm going to be there. I'm def- I have This I have fucking plane tickets for. So I'll be there on the 18th, the 19th, 20th. Um, if I do a show and I tell stories on the 19th or the 20th, cause again, theaters aren't getting back to me. I've heard no from three different theaters now. Uh, so I, if anything, I could do, like I said, that open air thing, or we could just fucking hang out, man. We could just like have hamburgers and talk and do, and do that. Um, if that's awkward and weird for you, if you, if you don't want to fucking hang out with me, I totally get it, dude. Uh, it's just weird. But at the same time, maybe it's just like a fan fest. We do a miniature Toronto fan fest and we all get together and cook out at Ken's house. I don't fucking know. I just bring covered dishes. Who brings a hot dish? You got a king. You bring potato salad. You got a king. You bring the hamburger buns. You got a king. Uh, Google that. Uh, so, so I'm there. The bottom line is I'm in Toronto. I'm ready to hang out. So if you guys are around and you want to do stuff, awesome. And if you don't, Ken and I will figure out shit to do. But, um, right now we were talking about maybe doing a show in his yard. We were talking about maybe doing a cookout and just a hang. Uh, or we can go meet for a dinner somewhere, but I, I kind of like the idea of just fucking hanging out and burning some citronella and sitting in the yard and fucking, you know, having some hard cider until fucking five in the morning. Uh, even though I'm not drinking, you guys are, I want you all to get sloppy drunk and then I'll slip out and disappear. <laughs> uh, so, so that's there, man. I'll be in Toronto, July 18th, 19th, 20. Uh, maybe we can make it an early 50th birthday thing. I don't fucking know how you want to look at it, but I'm going to be there and I'm excited. I might do a show in his yard. We might just do the fucking hang. Maybe we go have a fucking sandwich somewhere. I want to get to that fucking St. Lawrence market or whatever the fuck it was and have another pea meal bacon sandwich. I'm excited. So I love Toronto. I had a great time when I was there and anybody and everybody who wants to hang out, let me know. We'll be there and it'll be totally fun. Um, hold on. Apparently there's a helicopter that's about to crash into my fucking living room. You hear that? Jesus Christ, that's loud. Uh, hold on. Sean Penn and Robert Duvall just pulled up in a squad car. I, that can't be good news for what's happening out in the neighborhood right now. Uh, I, I will tell you this though. I am a nightmare walking psychopath talking. Um, so anyway, so that's existing. Oh, and Hey, by the way, if you guys want to be Uber drivers or Lyft drivers, if you want to be a Lyft driver, use my code Mike seven, two, double five, seven. That's M I K E seven, two, double five, seven, all caps on the letters become a Lyft driver. If you want to be an Uber driver, use all lowercase D J Z W one Y T T U E D J Z W the number one Y T T U E. And, uh, that'd be awesome. That'd make me an Uber pimp and I'd make some money while you guys are out there burning the gas and driving people around and I'm driving people around and eventually we'll have just like all the money we possibly can. And then if I can get a bunch of people like driving underneath my umbrella, like I said, I'll be the Uber pimp. And then when the fucking water wars start, we can all band together and just be like, I'll be like Lord humongous and I'll be in a fucking mask and all of us will just drive the wasteland with fucking Mad Max strapped to the goddamn front of the hood of the car together. And we'll just be uh, all shiny and chrome. All of us right now, lifting an Ubering together. So please use my codes and become drivers and do those sorts of things. That would be great. And now I'm off, man. I got to go visit with Ahmad. I got to take him. Uh, I already picked him up at the airport today and we already went and had Guisado's Tacos. Because I said, what do you want? He goes, I have to have tacos. I have to. So I brought him for Guisado's Tacos at fucking like five. And then he's like, all right, man. So you pick me up around nine for dinner. And I'm like, I, in my head, I'm just like, man, you are a machine. Like, cause I'm, I eat three tacos. Fuck. So I think we're going for ramen tonight because I'm obsessed with this fucking ramen in this place called Tentenu. Fucking, I mean, I've never had ramen in a goddamn restaurant. Did I talk about this on here? I don't fucking know. Uh, because to me, like when you have wonton soup at a Chinese joint, they get that hunk of flavorless pork in there. It tastes like a catcher's mitt. I was like, fuck, man, I don't want this kind of shit. But then I go to the ramen joint. It's all pork loin and pork belly and just fucking beautiful. It's so delicious. So I think I'm taking him for a rocket ramen tonight because that's what a belly full of tacos needs is a goddamn noodle hat. I just got to go ahead and swallow a noodle hat right on top of a goddamn belly full of tacos. Um, but he and I are just running all over, man. We're going to see Spider-Man. We're going to see Baby Driver. Uh, we might be going to see Harry Potter uh, World at Universal because he's a Harry Potter dude. And, uh, and I know, yes, I need to watch the movies. I need, I need, every time I talk on here about something I haven't seen, everybody jumps in. Our friend Liana, super fan Liana, the, the, probably the top fan of the show. That's right. I put her top of the list. If we're going to go with a bullet, I'm going to say Liana's number one. Uh, but she gave me all the Harry Potter DVDs once for my birthday and, uh, they're still in the cellophane. I have not watched them. I, I'm sorry to betray you, Liana. I wish I would watch them. Uh, but, but even Ahmad is like, you got to watch those dude. But it's like, every time I talk about that on here, like I talked about not having our, our friend, Jamie is also uh, really cool. And, uh, I talk about not having things. So I said, Hey man, I didn't see guardians of the galaxy. So I get an Amazon package. It's fucking star Lord, a Funko of star Lord. She goes, this should make you watch the show. Do it now. I can't believe it. First. She texted me. You haven't seen guardians. You're killing me smalls. And then the next day, the Amazon package shows up. Then one day an Amazon package showed up and it's a fucking Batman and Joker salt and pepper shaker set. 
And I'm like, fuck, I got to start cooking just to use these two dudes. I got I to have a fucking dinner party just so people can go ahead and shake Pepper out of the Joker's head. That's fucking fantastic. And that's got to be Pepper, right? Because in my head, I was like, well, Pepper should go on Batman because he's black. And then the Joker gets salt because he's salty. But if you spin it around, the Joker goes with Pepper because of the sneeze and the joke and the gag. And then the Batman gets salt because there's nobody fucking saltier than Batman, right? That is a salty dude. He's all just jawline and stare. Jawline, stare, and salt. That's what Batman is. <laughs> yourself it's easier to hide when you pretend you're the nice women love a guy with a giant neck See you. 